Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve generate parentheses. So we are given a pair, a certain number n pairs of parentheses and we want to write a function to generate combinations of all well formed parentheses. And so you can see that these are the examples and by well formed, they basically mean like when you're writing code, you know, you're nesting parentheses you want uh, them to be nested in a valid way, right? Like we can't have a right parenthesis come before a left parenthesis, right? Like this could not be possible. We would have to do it like this, right? So you can see for each matching, for each left parenthesis, we have a matching right parenthesis that comes at some point after it, right? So like in the first example, the first three are left parentheses, then the next three are right parentheses. And when they say n equals three, that means we have three pairs of parentheses. So in total, we have six parentheses because a pair is two parentheses. And three are going to be open parentheses and three are going to be closed parentheses, right? So this is a open parenthesis. This is a closed parenthesis. You can see that when n equals one, there's only one possible way to make them valid because this is one way and the other way would be this. And we know that this is invalid. So how can we solve this problem? Let's just try out the backtracking solution kind of, right? Like a a sort of brute force approach. How would we even do a brute force approach? Let's say n equals three. So then we have three parentheses. What does that tell us about valid parentheses, right? Like this is one valid parenthesis that satisfies this condition, right? We have three open parentheses, three closing parentheses. Well, the first thing it tells us is that we need three open parentheses and three closing parentheses, right? That much is pretty obvious right like you could probably figure that out by yourself if we have three pairs then we definitely need three open and three closing parentheses so in total six parentheses but what about the order of parentheses so let's say I have so far I'm empty right we're empty can I start out with an open parenthesis yes I can right but can I start out with a closing parenthesis? No, we know that this is invalid. No matter what I do now, this is always going to mess up our parentheses. So we can't start with a closing parenthesis. We can only start with an open parenthesis. Okay, but now let's say I have one open parenthesis. Now what can I do? Can I have another open parenthesis? Yup, because our limit is three open parentheses and so far we have two, so we're allowed to do that. What about a closing parenthesis? Can I have a closing parenthesis? Yes, because so far our open count is one and the and initially the closing count is zero and I can, by adding this parenthesis, I'm just changing the closing count to one now, right? So now let's look at it. Now can I add a, another open parenthesis? Yes, I can because the limit is three open parentheses and so far we only have one. So I'm allowed to add a open parenthesis. What about a closing parenthesis? Can I add a closing parenthesis right now? No, because you see that so far we have one pair, right? This pair of open and closing parentheses. And then when you get rid of that pair, then we're just left with a single close parenthesis. This closing parenthesis will never have a matching open parenthesis on the left of it. So we can't add this parenthesis. And how would you figure that out from code? Well, just take a look at the count we have so far. Before we add the parenthesis, we have a count of one for closed. We have a count of one for open. Basically what this tells us is that we can only add a closing parenthesis if the count of closing parentheses is less than the open count. We can only, if this is true, are we allowed to add a closing parenthesis? So if, for example, if I were to add another opening parenthesis, now we update our open count to two. So now we have two open parentheses, right? So two is open, one is closed from over here, right? So now I'm allowed to add a closing parenthesis, right? So basically, let's say if we're gonna do backtracking, these are the two rules that we have to follow. This is basically our base case. Once we have three open and three closing parentheses, then we have a valid uh, parenthesis uh, formation, right? 
And this condition tells us when we're allowed to add closing parentheses, we can add as many open parentheses as we want, as long as it's under the limit, which is n, right? We can add up to three open parentheses, but we can only add a closing parenthesis if the number of closing so far is less than the number of open parentheses. So with that said, let's start our backtracking solution. So we so far we're empty, right? So the first thing we're going to do is add a open parenthesis. So now this is what we are so far, a single open parenthesis. Since we added a open parenthesis, that means the count of open is greater than the count of close. So now we have two choices. We can add a open parenthesis or we can add a closing parenthesis. So we have potentially two open parentheses or a single open and a single close. Okay, let's take a look at this decision. Here we have open is greater than or equal to close, right? And the number of open is still less than three, so we can do both choices. So from here, we can add another opening parenthesis, so we have potentially three, and we can add a closing parenthesis, so two open and one close. From here, we see that the open and close count is actually equal, right? We have one of each. So here we don't have any choices. We have to add a open parenthesis. So what we're going to do is have just another open parenthesis come after. Okay, so I'm running out of room, but let's continue. So over here, now we have three opening parentheses, right? So we reached our limit, which is n. So we can only make one choice, and that's to add a closing parenthesis. So we're, now we're going to have three open and a single closing parenthesis. Here you can see that we have two open parentheses and one closed parenthesis. So we can actually add we have two choices. We can add an open and we can add a close. So if we add an open, we'll end up with two open, one close, and then another open, or we'll end up with two open parentheses and two closing parentheses. Over here, we also have two choices because we see we have two open parentheses and one closing parentheses. So we have, so if we add a open parenthesis again, we'll end up with open, close, open, open. If we add a closing parenthesis, we will end up with open, close, open, close. Okay, so we're almost done. Start, starting over here, we see we, we have three open parentheses, so we can only add a closing parenthesis now. So open, 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 close, close. From here, we actually only have one choice. Even though we have more open, we have three open and one close which open is more than close, so we should be able to add one of each, but we can't because we know that three is the limit, so we can't add any more opening parentheses. We can only add a closing one. So the new parenthesis we add is closing. Here we also have one choice. Even though we only have two open and two close, we know that the open count is equal to the closing count, so we can't add another closing parenthesis because that would make it invalid, right? So we can only add a opening parenthesis. So we'll just add a single open. Here we all we also only have one choice because we already have three opening parentheses. So we can only add a closing parenthesis at this point. Here we also have one choice. We can only add a open parenthesis because if we add a closing parenthesis, that would make this invalid because then the close count, which would be would be greater than the open count, right? Which we cannot do. And so at this point, for each of these five, we only need to add a single more parenthesis. And since this has three open three and two close, we know that we need three of each. So the only thing we can do is add another closing parenthesis to it, right? So this is going to be one possible solution because now we actually have three of each, which is what we wanted. For this one, we have three open and three cl and two close. So lastly, we are going to add another closing parenthesis. And, and you might notice that's what we're going to do for each of these, right? Because each of these now has three open and two close. So all we need to do is add another closing parenthesis. And for this one, we also are just adding a closing parenthesis. And lastly, this one, we're also adding a single closing parenthesis. So now you, if you look at all five of these, you see that they're all valid, right? 
and you see they have they have three of each and they come in a valid ordering so these five are going to be returned as our result these are the five ways we can make valid parentheses so now let's finally write the code this is basically what we're going to do you can see i summarized it so we're only going to add an open parenthesis if open count is less than our input n we're only going to add a closing parenthesis if the closed count is less than open and we're only gonna stop adding parentheses altogether once our open count equals our closed count, which is gonna equal n. So I'm gonna do this recursively because that's basically the best way to do it. And I'm gonna create a stack, which is gonna hold our parentheses. And I'm gonna create a variable result, which is gonna have our list of valid parentheses combinations. And I'm gonna do this recursively. So I'm gonna put a function backtrack inside of another function so if we have this then we don't need to pass in these two variables into our function because this is nested inside of here we also don't need to pass n in into this function either but we are gonna have to pass in our open and closed count so I'll call it open n and closed n so we know the base case is if open n is equal to closed n which is equal to n so in that case we have finished and basically our stack will contain the proper parentheses. So what I'm going to do is basically some Python stuff, but you could probably handle this with a string if you wanted. You don't actually need to use a stack, but I just like doing it. So what I'm going to do is take every character in the stack and join them together into a empty string. So once they have been joined together, they will form a complete string. And what I'm going to do is append that to our result list. And once I've done that, I can just return, right? Because this is our base case. Remember, if we want to add a open parenthesis, we have to check that our open count is less than n. If that's true, what we can do is to our stack, we can append a open parenthesis. So just an open parenthesis, and then we can recursively continue our backtrack. And But if we do that, we have to increment our open count by one, and the closed count remains the same. And after that backtracking returns, though, we do have to update our stack because we only have a single stack variable. Remember, we're not passing the stack into every single call. This stack is basically a global variable. So every time we're done with backtracking, we're going to pop the character that we just added to the stack. And if we want to add a closing parenthesis, we have to make sure that the closed count is less than the open count. So then we can take our stack and append a closing parenthesis, and then we can call our backtrack function, our recursive backtrack, except we'll leave open count the same this time, and we'll actually increment the closed count. And as before, we're also gonna need to clean up, so we're gonna have to update our stack by popping the character that we just added. And this is actually the entire function. So you can see we broke it up into three conditions, which I commented up here and I explained in the visual explanation. So the only thing we have to do now is call our backtrack function, pass in zero for the initial open and closed count because our stack is initially empty. And then we can return what our result will contain, which will be the list of valid parentheses. So as you can see, this solution works and it is pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. And if it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.